is an international best-selling author. She's a keynote speaker, a TV personality, and a mentor known all over the world, and his happiness is a choice. So, Lynn D. Eldridge, everyone. Got it, Maestro? Officer of the Happiness Jungle. Lindy! Woo! And I want to share with you, people always ask me, how did you become the happiness? How did you start and why did you start the Happiness Jungle? When somebody gives you a warning, even if they apologize and said they didn't mean it, you need to take those warnings seriously. And in 2016, I was having challenges in my marriage. And my former husband said to me, you better figure out a way how to make another income. Meanwhile, we were working together in business for 14 years. And I said, wow. And I spoke to God in the universe. I said, what am I gonna do? And the universe and God said to me, you are a happiness angel and that's what you're going to do. And the happiness jungle was created in 2016 and it is growing strong in the middle of 2019 because I believe in me. And how many of you believe in you 110%, not 100%, but 110%. And there's nothing that you can't do as long as you keep investing in yourself and you stick and stay with the positive people in the world. In 2009, I became a published author of Tears of Fears Behind Closed Doors. How many of you know somebody that was involved or is involved in domestic violence? That's my story. I grew up in a very, very toxic environment. I was the only one out of three kids that was abused. I was told I was worthless. I am nothing. I will never become anything. I am dyslexic and therefore you will, we, will not, we will not invest in you to go to college. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the most successful out of all three of us. Ooh. Tears of fears behind closed doors. I encourage you that if you know anybody that is involved in domestic violence to please come and get my book because it's not a woe is me it's to help them get out of these relationships safely that was my first book let me take you fast forward to 2017 2017 was my tornado year how many of you have ever had a tornado hit you left right and center <laughs> ladies and gentlemen i wasn't only being hit left right and center i was hitting up and down and all around my world was spinning in 2017 
I decided I was living up in New Hampshire. I love New Hampshire. I'm originally from New York. I try to tell people I'm from Alabama, but they don't believe that, Chris. I don't know. Originally from New York, I was transplanted, and I say transplanted because I was told to get in the car. We're going to South Florida. It wasn't my choice. And I lived here for 33 years. I grew up in the city of Summers, and I went to Piper High School, as we say. <laughs> And here is where I got out of my domestic home environment only at the age of 18 to get married to Prince Charming who ended up to be anus. And he was an abuser. But through that relationship was purpose. And I want you all to understand that life is full of purpose. It's not about what happens to you. It is about what happens for you. You have to be on purpose. And as long as you understand that, everything that goes on in your life, everything, everything has purpose. Because of the domestic violence background, thank God, I appreciate everybody that has hurt me, mentally, physically, and sexually, because it helps me help others. You understand? So in 2017, that was really the tornado year. I moved to New Hampshire because I fell in love 14 years ago, I guess it's 15 years now, to another gentleman. We were a combined family. Things were going good until they weren't going good anymore. So in 2017, because I have created the happiness jungle for purpose, because I was warned. How many of you have ever been warned? And then how many of you have ever been told, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I love you. Right there. And I said, I love you too. <laughs> But I'm going to take that warning and I'm going to create another dream of mine. And as much as it was tried to have been squashed, you all feeling me? You can't squash me. I'm a weeble. And what is a weeble? We wobble. There you go. Because we always stand back up. So during this tornado, man, I'll tell you what, I was weebling. But through it all, I'm back on standing up because you are seeing me and I am not a spirit. I am spiritual. So in 2017, my world was really going through a tornado. I came down to South Florida. My mom lived here. She's 84 years old. Many know her around the world as Hurricane Francis. She's one of the meanest <laughs> ladies in the world. And I do mean mean. A matter of fact, if you go to my YouTube channel, my whole brand is Happiness Jungle. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Go to the playlist, Hurricane Francis. Meet my mother. <laughs> she got very sick. Very sick. And I ended up literally pausing my life for one year because we do what we have to do. And we don't ask why because there's purpose. The woman who abused me more than any of her other kids, I'm the only child that came forth for her. Go figure, right? And you wanna know why? Because karma's a bitch, and I don't wanna hit karma. Karma's gonna love me till I die. The karma's gonna have to take care of my sister and my brother, and I got nothing to do with it. I learned forgiveness a long time ago. My sister says, I'm sorry. I said, you don't have to say sorry to me, I'm good. You're gonna have to say sorry eventually, right? Not my challenge. Don't own what you don't have to own. So in 2017, I came down, my mom got very sick. I canceled over 21 paid speaking engagements throughout the whole United States. My business was growing, it was doing good, but I needed to pause it. Except for this one speaking engagement in September in New Hampshire, and it was for families in transition. Can you feel me? There was no way I was gonna cancel that. I made sure that my mom was taken care of. We got a really great caretaker so I could go up for a few days. Well, my God, while I'm up there, I might as well go for my physical. That's where my health insurance is. I felt great. I looked great. Nothing was wrong with me. I was just going for my physical. Only to find out I have breast cancer. However, I'm now breast cancer free over a year and a half. Give it up. And these tacos, they're mine. They're mine. 
So, why do I show you this? Because it's another book that I wrote in regards to Squeeze My Tatas. You're only one mammogram away from knowing. You're only one mammogram away from knowing. Gentlemen, this is for you as well. Purpose. I did not. When I found out I had the breast cancer, little, I was shocked. I, I was not expecting that. They could have told me I had an ulcer, I might have believed that one, but breast cancer? So God bless you. Sneeze the truth. Sneeze is the truth. <laughs> so, breast cancer. I looked up at the universe and I looked up at God and I said, what's the purpose? What's the purpose? There's not much there. How much are you going to take? It was to write a book. And it was to help people through it on a positive level with a healthy mindset. My doctor wrote the forward for the book because she could not get over how much I was impacting the world while I was going through the breast cancer. How much of a difference I not only made to her and her staff but other patients. So she wrote the forward of the book and there's also a workbook in the back of the book to help us have a healthier mindset to deal with whatever we're going through. Squeeze my tatas. When I gave it to the editor, she said to me, what do you want the cover to look like? I said, I don't know. And I sent her this as a joke. I sent that as a joke. Those aren't mine. They're pretty. Because <laughs> they're mine. And no one gets to touch them. But me. Because I've been divorced for a year and a half. So another purpose that came out of the breast cancer. Three weeks into radiation is when I got my divorce. So I want you to now think about how you would have acted. I became a caretaker, a very abusive woman. Found out you had the breast cancer and got divorced three weeks into radiation. Most of you would have put the blanket over your head and say, where's my grave? I'm going to start digging. I said, hell no. I ain't digging. I ain't digging. But here's what happened is that I knew and I even asked my former husband, because we were still married, when I found that I had the breast cancer, I said, just come back to New Hampshire with me. I just want to be held at night. That's all. I'm not high maintenance. That's all I want. And he couldn't do it. So I said, I forgive you for your weaknesses. Because you got to let people go, man. you got to let people go. Forgiveness isn't for the other person. It's for you. You don't even have to call the person. You never have to talk to the person. You just got to say it loud enough so it releases the poison from the inner you. You understand? So I was lonely. I was blessed. My daughter and her, my four beautiful granddaughters. People, you know, this is really weird. People always say, you got four granddaughters? And I'm like, I do. They're like, you look great. I'm like, I didn't give birth to them. <laughs> I never know why people tell me I look great when I have four granddaughters. Just saying. It was a little crazy to me. So during the breast cancer, and I was blessed that I was able to stay with my daughter and her family and I got love. Oh boy, did I get love. I got lots of love. But the one thing I didn't get was at night the hugs. And I was scared. There was something on Facebook, there was something on Instagram, I don't know where I saw it, but it was a body pillow. But it was a body pillow so that I could sit up. And as far as I knew, I didn't know what I didn't know, so I didn't know how I was going to feel after the surgery. But I'm a workaholic, so I knew I'd want to sit up. So I figured, wow, this looks really comfortable. Well, lo and behold, that's not what I used the body pillow for. It hugged me every single night. It not only hugged me every single night for a year and a half, I talk about it on stages, I write about it in my books, and three months ago I woke up and said, why aren't you producing this body pillow that has a solution Again, purpose for others. So I'm at the 10X event in Miami, Florida with Grant Cardone. Anyone else there? Yes. It was unbelievable. And there was Damon John, Shark Tank. And he spoke. 
And I hired him to be my mentor because I was coming out with product. Wow. And I learned about trademarking, I learned about patenting. So I called up the Trademark Patent USA, not an attorney, but literally, I, I go right to the source. You see what I'm saying? I go right to the source. When I want information, and I don't Google crap, because that's a waste of time. I'm the old fashioned girl that wants an answer quickly, so, hi. Right? And I asked about, do I, how can I patent a pillow that's already in existence? And here's the deal. You can't patent a pillow, but you can repurpose it and trademark it with your information. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. That's when I trademarked Happiness Jungle, my logo, and now my pillow is being produced in India because Trump and China are not getting along. <laughs> so you have to have the solution mind, right? And I am so excited that I finally got a picture and my pillow is arriving next week. <laughs> and once it's in my hands and around my body, I will approve it and then I will have it mass produced for everybody to be able to sleep at night. If you're sick, if you're single, if you're lonely at night, if you're not being hugged, if you're married and you can't sleep next to one another. You know, there are a lot of people that can't, after they have, <clears throat> that they can't touch. They're like, no, 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 don't, don't touch me for the rest of the night. You, you know? But then I would like to be hugged. So the body pillow serves purpose for those lonely, lonely moments at night. Does that make sense? Yeah. How many of you wish that you could be hugged through the night? And if you don't want to be hugged, you just throw the arm off you. <laughs> and you don't have to answer it. <laughs> you don't have to give in to it. And here's the other thing I'm going to share with you because I'm Wendy Eldridge and I hope I don't insult you. And if by any chance I offend anybody, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the person next to you. <laughs> Along with the body pillow, because I am not the kind of woman that dates around. I am looking for the long-term relationship now because I'm ready a year and a half later. Because I've learned about me again. Don't be in a hurry to get back into a relationship. You lonely? Get my body pillow. <laughs> Just saying. And something else that needs batteries. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So I said to my former husband, I called him and I said, I appreciate you. He said, you do? I said, I do. Because if you didn't divorce me, I would have never, ever created the body pillow. Purpose. Purpose. You see? My life is so full of purpose because I never ought to woe is me. When I started the happiness jungle, my mind goes crazy. I know, y'all can't tell, right? My mind goes crazy. So let me show you this. See this, everybody? Y'all see that? Yeah. When I started the happiness jungle, I was talking to my sister, and she said, so what, God bless, God bless, it's true. She sneezed three times, it's really gotta be true. I love people. I am a people person, and people like me. And every time I'm around them, they always wanna take me home. They say, if I could stuff you in my pocket, I would. I said, well, you can't. And your pants would fall down if I was in your pocket. 145 pounds, can you imagine carrying me around? It ain't happening. But what I decided is that, you know what? I'm going to create this thing called a happiness companion. But that's not what I called it back then. I called it a happy tooth, like a prostitute, but no sex. <laughs> And then I realized that that's probably not going to be very acceptable around the world. So again, I want to talk to you very quickly about being flexible and then you're going to understand your rubber bands, okay? I want you to understand flexibility. Every time you come up with something in your business, 
I want you to be flexible enough to understand that you will always be reinventing something in your life and in your business to make your business keep on going into momentum. Does that make sense? Yes. And so, I am now a happiness companion. Widows, widowers, anybody, how many times do you hear of people anywhere in the world? They stop living. They don't go to their favorite restaurants. They don't go to the movies. They don't go traveling. They don't go into shows. They don't do anything. And their number one reason is because they have no one to go with. So I am now the happiness companion, no strings attached. And I go on their excursions and then they also pay me for my time. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? And because, purpose, I'm divorced, I'm an empty nester, I'll go anywhere. Just not to bed with them. So one gentleman calls me up and he lives in New York and he said, Wendy, he said, you're contagious. I said, I know. <laughs> and he said, I would love to hire you to be my happiness companion, but what do I do at night? Because you already told me you won't go home with me. And I said, you're right, but I have a solution. <laughs> my body. My body up. <laughs> and I got to share with you, it's awesome. It is awesome. Anyone that tries my body pillow falls in love with it. So I have a gentleman friend and his wife, 67 years old. They come to my home and I make them lunch. I love to cook, right? Okay. And I said, Richard, you got to try this. He says, Lindy, I don't need your body pillow. I got Marie. And I says, I'm not asking you to buy it. I'm asking you for a testimonial. You all with me on that? People got to try it, right? And I said, and I need a man's point of view because I already know what the women think about it. And I said, so do me a favor. He says, what? I said, get in my bed. I said, come on, Marie. She goes, what? I said, it's not going to be a threesome. The body pillow only holds one. Only holds one. So Richard, got, Richard gets in my bed, and I said to him, lay the way you normally do when you're going to go to sleep. Most of us sleep on our sides. So I said, okay, and this is what I want to do. And I went ahead and I wrapped the body pillow around him and the other arm went between his legs because we should not be sleeping with our knees connected. You all got me on that? So we're talking about posture. And I said, now don't say a word. Don't say a word. Give it a five second test. Five seconds, right? So he says, okay. Five seconds passed and I said, Richard, he says, oh my God. I need to order one. Marie needs to order one. I have so many pre-orders on this body pillow because it's just that good. You all with me on that? Repurposing. So anyone that's going through the cancer, come and get my book for them. It's to help them. That's why I do what I do. You all got some colored bands, didn't you? You ready to hear about those color bands? I'm talking about flexibility in your life, right? Flexibility in your life. And we need to coexist in this world. I don't care what religion you are. I was born at you. I'm going to die at you. But you cannot convert me. But I do coexist. You all with me on that? How many pinks do we have in the house? Raise your hand, all my pink people. That means... You got some love in you, you are peacemakers, you don't want anything to go on in the world. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah. Where are my blues? Where are my blues? You fun people, you party animals, you, you just want to go and have fun. That's your story and you're sticking to it. You just want to have fun. Where are my greens? Where are my greens? And you are the go-getters of the world. Let me tell you what, you are unstoppable. And where are my oranges? You overthinkers, you. You are overthinkers. You got to stop overthinking. But here's what I know to be true, is that we all coexist in this world, and together we can make a difference, and together we can make an impact in our world. I am Lindy Eldridge. I am your chief happiness officer. I am